At Bloomberg Philanthropies, we know that human-centered design is an incredible tool that governments can use to solve really complex problems. And at its core, human-centered design is a new way to solve problems, putting people first. So in the graphic here that we use and teach cities around the world, um, you'll see that there's three main components to human-centered design in the way that we talk about it. We talk about understanding the problem, generating ideas, and delivering results. So we start with understanding the problem because human-centered design actually is so effective in that it starts with questions. It doesn't start with solutions. So often, um, and I'm sure you've experienced this, your boss or teacher has asked you to come to them with solutions. How would you fix this problem? Or companies do this all the time and say, we've developed this product that we know is going to meet your needs. Um, the challenge with that is that they never necessarily asked us what that was. And so human-centered design understands the problem by learning about the experiences from the perspective of the people who are actually impacted by the problem. So if we're looking at improving, reducing homelessness or improving access to education, we're going to actually go out into the community and understand what that problem is like from the people who are homeless or from people who are having challenges in accessing education. Um, we in design talk about solving for those people's unmet needs. We're not solving for my needs or your needs, we're solving for their needs. And it's critical that we understand the root causes of complex problems before we come up with ideas so that we know we're going to have real impact on this problem, um, not at the symptom level, but at, the, at its core, the, the root causes. And then we move into the generation of ideas where we challenge ourselves to be really creative and come up with bold and unexpected solutions to these challenges. We challenge ourselves to reframe the problems and think about them in new ways that help us come up with ideas that we wouldn't have otherwise. And this is so important in government because it gives us the chance to, um, to change the way that government works and to deliver services in ways that it never has before. And in this generation phase, it's really important to practice an agile prototyping and testing methodology, meaning we don't uh, spend time incubating ideas and building them out completely and then rolling them out to the public, we actually say, let's come up with the ideas. Let's actually not spend any money up front. Let's go out and test these ideas with the people who are experiencing the problem and get their quick feedback so that we're constantly iterating and building the idea, making it stronger and stronger every time we get that feedback so that by the time gov the government's ready to launch that new uh, idea, that new program, service, or product, We've actually done the testing up front, and we're only investing in the idea when we know that it's going to work. And that's a really important way for governments to reduce their risk and generate better returns on the investments they make to the residents in their cities and in their states. And lastly, um, we can come up with all the good ideas in the world, but if we don't focus on implementation, um, those ideas don't really matter. And so good delivery and design can make or break innovation. And it's so important for us to think about a portfolio of ideas that we might um, deliver. Um, it's very common in these complex government problems that we have a suite of ideas that we need to tackle the problem with and that we develop implementation measures and metrics to understand if we're actually getting the results that we intended. And if not, that we go back and iterate again and, and continue to improve the idea. So um, at Bloomberg Philanthropies, we work with cities all over the world to help them learn new innovation tools and methods, including design, to solve really challenging problems. One of the cities that we work with is in Tel Aviv, Israel. So Tel Aviv is one of the most expensive cities to live in in the world. And the cost of living was so high for young families that they found a lot of them were having to move out into the suburbs. So our innovation team there used design to tackle this problem. They did some quick quantitative research to understand whether, you know, what part of living expenses were the most costly to families. 
Um, and after housing, they found that it was education and child care, which is what they decided to focus on. So um, to understand this problem, they actually spent time out in the communities embedded in families' homes where there were young children to try to understand where the bulk of those costs were, were really coming from for them. And they narrowed in, because of that research, on um, high school-aged children. The municipal government doesn't provide um, some support services after school, and so a lot of families were having to pay for one-on-one -on -one tutors, which were really costly. Um, and when the innovation team actually sat and observed these tutoring sessions, they found that the students didn't actually need the tutor very much. They needed the structure of having somebody there kind of watching them over their shoulder, encouraging them to do their work. But they only had a couple of questions of the tutor um, throughout the course of the hour when they got stuck here or there. So the I-team came up with a great idea to create a shared service that the entire community could use. So instead of having one student and one tutor, that's really expensive, they created study halls, pop-up study halls. And they prototyped this with just rough cardboard and um, random furniture in a, in a part of the city that no one was using. And they invited students to come there. They had two tutors for 15 to 20 kids. And the children were able to do their homework, um, ask for tutor help when they needed, um, but it really saved the family a lot of money. That combined with a couple other ideas that they came up with, um, if families took advantage of all of those ideas, they found that it would save them $5,000 a year, which is a serious amount of money um, for these young families, and it's uh, a portfolio of ideas that's being scaled across the city. Um, when you're first starting out in applying design, it can feel a little overwhelming. Um, there's a, a lot to the process, and um, the, the complex problems that we face in government can sometimes feel a bit too much to tackle. So I think that when you're starting out, it's really important to keep it simple. Start to learn the basics of design and start applying it in ways that feel a little bit safe. So maybe you introduce a new facilitation exercise in your next team meeting. Or maybe you find a, a process that your team really struggles with and you partner with one or two other colleagues and start applying design to that. Um, but give yourself time to learn how to do this and experiment um, before diving into something really challenging. Another Recommendation, recommendation that I would make is to um, be curious. Um, again, we're not designing for ourselves, and we may feel like we should have the answers, but it's really the community and the stakeholders in these complex problems that have the answers. So if you find yourself trying to reach for solutions, step back and remind yourself to just ask the questions. Why is this person experiencing that? Well, let me ask them. Right? Don't make assumptions. Um, look for all the different ways in which you can learn about the problem rather than try to solve it. Another um, important tip, I think, is to spend more time understanding the problem than anything else in this process. If you don't truly understand the root causes behind these complex problems, you're only gonna be coming up with ideas that solve the symptoms, that don't really have the measured impact and improvement on people's lives that you want. So take the extra time and really understand what's going on in these complex systems um, before you start generating ideas. I think another important tip is to um, get this work out of your laptop, make it visual. When you're doing this work in innovation, it's so important that you have all that data, that deep understanding that you did by talking to residents out in the field and doing qualitative research. You need to externalize that data, put it up on the wall, put it on post-it notes, so that your brain can actually make the correlative um, associations between these disparate pieces of data, these things that you wouldn't think actually make sense or have any relation to one another can be some of the most important discoveries that you make in the research that can lead to the, some of the most innovative ideas you'll have. 
keep it visual um, for those reasons and also because it allows other people to come into your work. By having it visual, people, you can bring people into your office and show them rather than tell them what design looks like to show them what this problem looks like in a way where they feel really excited to contribute and potentially become a new collaborator um, that can help you move this project forward. Um, it's, a, it's a really great way to build buy-in. Um, another important tip is, is to build a lot of stakeholders that co-create this work with you. You know, it's, it's important in design that we don't keep things siloed. The best innovations come when you bring a lot of diverse people to the table. So it's a great opportunity to take the housing department or the sanitation department and the legal department and bring them all together and think about this challenge in, in complex ways. In addition to bringing residents in as co-creators in this work, um, it's, it's where the powerful ideas come from. And lastly, just have fun. Um, again, design is about experimentation at its core and discovery and and use this as an opportunity to try something new to interject new energy into your work um, new and fun creative ideas that um, have real impact and and can change the way you work